Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be talking about the three main methods of heat transfer. By conduction, convection and radiation. And I really like this picture because it, it nicely demonstrates all three. It's one that I use with my own students. So over on the right you've got conduction here of the heat passing from the pan to the guy's hand. You have these what are called convection currents set up actually within the pan itself and you can see there's heat radiation being given off from the flame so this one picture alone kind of shows all three what we're going to do is take each one and explain essentially what's going on so we'll start with conduction so let's just imagine we have here just a strip of metal an example of a solid Conduction happens in solids, liquids and gases, but we'll just take this solid. What we're going to imagine is that we have a hand here holding a match that's lit with a flame. Now, in a solid, the particles are arranged. I say particles, what we're actually meaning is essentially the atoms. The atoms are arranged in a regular sort of fixed arrangement or pattern they're all next to each other like so and this is something that's covered right at the beginning of key stage three now when you heat an object like this those atoms gain kinetic energy so we'll just shade them in black they gain kinetic energy and what they do is vibrate so the key here is that they vibrate and when they vibrate they pass that energy on to nearby atoms so when they vibrate they almost knock into other atoms passing on that energy and those pass that on to ones that they come into contact with so the ones that I've shaded in black they'll start to vibrate and they'll pass that energy on to the ones I've shaded in red and then those will continue by passing those vibrations onto the ones that I'm shading in blue and so forth so that vibration essentially spreads through the metal so that heat that we apply initially is conducted through the material so this is essentially what happens in conduction atoms vibrate and carry that energy down the material by vibrating and passing it on to nearby atoms making them vibrate in turn now that's the level at which you do it at key stage three in key stage four there is a little something extra and it's it's that some atoms donate electrons which are small parts of the atoms within to the material itself that's why I've just drawn these green dots. And it forms like a sea of electrons. And they can freely move between these atoms within the solid and help transfer that heat much quicker. So as well as the heat being passed down the material from vibrating atom to vibrating atom, these electrons can actually just move and pass the heat down much quicker also and this essentially is our first method of heat transfer this is conduction now metals are very good conductors conductors are those that allow heat conduction to happen fairly easily those that don't those materials that don't allow this sort of method of heat transfer easily they're called insulators and when we think of insulators we can think of things like rubber, wood, some non-metallic objects typically. So if we go back to our picture of the pan you can see on the right hand side conduction is happening because the heat is transferred from this part of the handle and it's working its way 
to the man's hand. It's going through the material by making those atoms vibrate. So that's con heat conduction. Let's think about convection. So you can see in the middle of this picture with convection, you have what appears to be this movement, just I'll show on this arrow here, this movement of the heated particles. They seem to be moving up and something appears to be moving down. And this really is the crux of convection. So what I'm going to just draw is a very simple picture of a beaker so with water. And let's imagine that we were to, again, with our hand, hold under a lit match. Now, convection happens in liquids and gases. When you heat atoms, they vibrate, they gain kinetic energy and they, they start to move further apart. So if we think of how the atoms are normally arranged in a liquid, they're not quite as close as a solid, but still relatively close to one another. So that's how they're normally arranged. We're just drawing a few particles, clearly not to scale, but just for the purpose of this. When you heat them, those particles start to move apart. So in this area, if we just focus on that area in blue, because there's less particles in that area, essentially, that part of the water, we say, becomes less dense. So this hot bit of liquid becomes less dense. And when it's less dense, it starts to rise. So those particles start to rise up, carrying the heat with them. So it's like when you put food in an oven, for example, you always, you always tend to put the food on the top shelf because you're always taught that the hot air rises. This is why. It's because when it becomes less dense, those particles have spread out, it becomes lighter, essentially, so it's able to rise up. As it rises up, it actually starts to cool, and when it cools, it, it contracts, and those particles move back closer together. When they move back closer together, the density increases and they start to fall. Now, before that happened, I'll just do it in another colour. When this hot air, or hot liquid rather, the particles rose, so we're talking about this bit here, colder the parts of water started to move in to replace those particles that were travelling upwards. So essentially, those particles have moved further apart and essentially are less dense, start to rise, so the heat rises and cooler parts of water start to move in to replace it. And that warm liquid at the top, once it starts to contract, becomes more dense and falls. And what you can see is that you get this current or this kind of cycle, this flow going up and then back down. And this is what's known as a convection current. That is a convection current. And that is our second method of heat transfer. Interestingly, the radiator, so when people turn the radiators on when they, they want to get a bit warmer, then the name kind of implies that you get heat radiation, but actually it's through convection currents that the radiator really heats up our homes because the heat gets transferred to the air particles around the radiator. It becomes far less dense, those air particles start to rise, carry that heat up, and we get to get this convection current set up again. So again, if we go, we can see in the middle the convection of heat, where the warm water is rising here, and then as it cools, it starts to fall. 
So we've done conduction, we've done convection. So now we'll finish with radiation. Radiation is an interesting one because there is something called, and I'll, I'll write it up at the top here, the electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum, which is actually all our electromagnetic waves. So we think of things like gamma rays, X-ray, infrared, visible light, microwaves, radio waves. Radiation of heat is through one of these electromagnetic waves. It's actually through infrared waves. So heat radiation travels as infrared waves which is completely different to conduction and convection because those require actual particles, actual particles to be moving. So in conduction we had those atoms conducting those vibrations along. In convection we had the particles rising and then falling. This, is, this doesn't require any particles because the radiation travels as a wave. And because it's a wave, it can travel through a vacuum. Also where there is no air. So for example in space. That's why we can feel the sun's heat. Even though there is no air in space. The sun's heat travels as infrared radiation. Now. All objects can emit. And absorb infrared. But some slightly like different than others. Imagine we had an object here that was quite matte, quite dark. And we took an object here that was quite shiny. Imagine we held, once again, just another match. Say, for example... And embedded within both materials, let's say we had thermometers, just checking the rise temperature. Again, very rough sketch. What we would find is that actually the black material, the material that's darker, actually absorbs infrared better and emits it more than the shiny material. That's why in the summer it, it, people tend to wear much lighter clothes like white t-shirts for example because it's much lighter in colour it's able to absorb less of those infrared waves so people stay cooler essentially so that's a little bit about infrared radiation and interestingly if we just talk about this picture here we can use things like thermal cameras to pick up and detect infrared radiation and it's used in this instance in a mammogram. So each different colour shown in this picture represents a different sort of amount of heat that the body is given off in the different areas. And you can see this area in red here is representing an area where a lot of infrared heat radiation is coming from or has been detected. Now in this example, this is actually a breast cancer. So we've got a lot of metabolic cell activity in that region and that's why we've got a lot of heat being generated. So we can produ produce these kind of images using thermal infrared cameras. We can also use them to detect heat losses from our homes, which I'll be talking about in another video. But that's just a little bit about radiation. So there are three main methods of heat transfer. Conduction, convection and radiation. Okay, hope that helps.